So what's up guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video on the channel, back with another Q&A, the series where we take your questions from the comment section below to do with the zombie storyline, easter eggs, and I answer them. As always, if you are enjoyed today's video, drop a like rating if you want to, make sure you are subscribed, but let's get into it, here we go. Squid says, hey BOA, in Blackout if you go to the cemetery and listen closely, you can hear Samantha crying by a grave. So yes, in Blackout we know we have plenty of zombies easter eggs, in fact, we probably have more easter eggs in that mode than easter eggs in zombies itself but there are plenty of references and easter eggs to zombies of course we have asylum which is verrucked we also have the diner from transit i don't really play too much blackout anymore so i couldn't tell you what easter eggs they currently have in the game i think they still do have actual zombies and at one point they had the black father the ray gun the ray gun mark 2 you could also find leroy's grave in the area for buried and as you say in the cemetery where the graves are you can hear a girl crying now is this samantha we don't 100 know this is a zombie area where zombies spawn but to be honest when i listen to it the girl crying sounds a little bit older than samantha she doesn't really sound like a kid so whether it is or isn't her we don't know but in zombies there are sound effects that are similar to this in keen area totem especially and also in for you could hear people women crying as well so this could be a sound effect from there honestly this really could be anyone but there are loads of zombies easter eggs in blackout alex says did the mob of the dead crew break the cycle and what happened to the weasel did he escape now we know mob of the dead was one of the only few maps to have two different endings along with buried however we know in buried one of those endings was canon which was the maxis side although there was two options for us to do only one of them actually happened story-wise the other just shows us a possible alternate ending that doesn't happen however with mob of the dead it doesn't tell us in the canorium which ending is canon did the crew break the cycle or did they continue it all it says is sal finn billy and al battle waves of the undead as they find themselves trapped in a seemingly endless cycle we know those characters are trapped in purgatory and throughout the whole easter egg they are trying to find a way to escape and it's only after them dying and resetting the cycle a few times where they finally realize that they are trapped in a loop and when they eventually discover this we either do one of two things we can choose to break the cycle by the weasel getting revenge on the other mobsters for killing him he has to kill them on the golden gate bridge or the cycle can be continued which is where the three mobsters kill the weasel so although we have two different endings it's never been told to us which one of these actually happens story-wise did the crew break the cycle and escape or did they continue the cycle leaving them trapped in this endless loop well we know in blood of the dead we can actually see the ghosts of finn al sal and billy as the premise crew are attempting to escape the island for themselves just as brutus is about to stop them the four mobsters appear as ghosts and richtofen says this sal finn al that teensy little seagull the ghosts of alcatraz have bought us the time we will use every moment so we can see in blood of the dead which takes place after mob of the dead the characters are ghosts they seem to be still in purgatory on alcatraz richtofen doesn't mention billy's name but he does say the other threes who are finn sal and al in which we can see when he says this there are three ghosts in front of him but he also mentions along with these characters the seagull and if you've played through the blood of the dead easter egg there is one specific seagull in this map that has quite a big role to play richtofen is first introduced to it when it steals the cranorium the seagull begins flying off with it richtofen has to track it down and get it back the seagull also ends up helping richtofen when brutus imprisons the characters in the jail cells the seagull helps set them free so who is this well if we listen to what samuel says in this map again if you don't know the transit crew in blood of the dead are frozen in the laboratory they have been put on ice by richtofen however because of the lighthouse on the island richtofen and stuhlinger can hear each other talk and so we see they begin communicating with one another and also samuel begins communicating to the seagull he can hear what it's saying i got something <laughs> guess what we're talking i can't speak seagull and he says not now samuel the, the bird icarus he said it's a trap he said rickon rickon oh please don't be dead don't be dead don't be please don't be dead i am not dead thank you for your concern Please stop shouting in my brain. Oh, jump in, fucking Jeremiah! You're alive! Oh, woo! Wait a second! I hear something! Atta bird, Icarus! 
dangerous. <laughs> what, what, what's that? Slow down. Okay. Okay, I'll tell him. Yeah, Icarus says, run! Way to go, guys! Ghost guys and you guys! Yeah, Warden's definitely kicking and screaming though. Yeah, they, they can't hang on forever, but I know you got a play! Yeah, you do! There is something we must do before we face the Warden again. It is the only remaining option. Uh, Samuel J. Stellinger! It's me, right? Heck yeah, Coach! Put me in! Oh, I'll kick that Warden square in his rotten berries! Stulinger tells us that the bird's name is Icarus. This is very familiar to us. Back in Mob of the Dead, the plane that the mobsters built was also called Icarus as well. We know this was an invention of Albert Arlington. This was his plan. And it seems like this seagull is Arlington. There are three ghosts and a seagull. Icarus, the seagull is Al, and the other three ghosts are Billy, Sal, and Finn. And well, getting back to your original question then, did the Mob of the Dead crew break the cycle or continue it? It seems to me that it was broken. If the cycle was continued, all four mobsters would continue to be trapped as ghosts in purgatory, but as we see, Arlington isn't, which means he killed the three mobsters of Billy, Sal and Finn. They continued to be trapped in Alcatraz as ghosts, whereas Arlington broke the cycle. He was no longer a ghost, but it seems like he's now taken on the form of a bird, able to fly freely around the island, but nevertheless still trapped in purgatory. But this doesn't really seem to matter anyway because at the end of Blood of the Dead, when Richtofen sacrifices himself in order to break the cycle, we see in the cutscene all of the ghosts on the island are finally set free, including the seagull. So in the end, all of the souls are released from purgatory. Billy, Sal and Finn, along with Arlington. Mountain J456 says, because Dr. Monty is evil, are the Keepers evil too? So I was thinking about this the other day, is Dr. Monty really evil? It's pretty clear to see that the Keepers are on his side. In the intro cutscene for Alpha Omega, we can see them fighting alongside Dr. Monty against the Shadow Man who is with the Apothecans, which gives us the dilemma of who is actually evil. Is it Monty? Is it the Shadow Man? Is it both of them? We know the Shadow Man definitely is. Working alongside the Apothecans, he's already killed many people by destroying dimensions. So we can safely say he is, but also we've seen Dr. Monty eat Maxis. We know that he's been keeping our characters in a loop all of this time. We believe the reason for this is to keep him alive. Dr. Monty needs Element 115 and the Ether to survive. Without it, he would cease to exist. But does that necessarily mean he's evil? If he's doing something to keep him alive, to keep him in power, in order for that to happen, he has to keep people in a cycle. If he knew if the cycle was to get broken, he would die. So, can you really blame him for wanting to stay alive? Obviously, Dr. Monty is evil and the Keepers have been working alongside him. We've seen it in our different maps and in the Great War. So whether that means they're evil or not, I'm not too sure. Possibly they don't know of Dr. Monty's true plan. Maybe just like everyone else, they're stuck in a loop as well. We know the Keepers were among the first to exist alongside Monty and the Shadow Man. They've been here since the very beginning alongside them. So it's difficult to say. Maybe they do have the same intentions as Monty. Possibly if the Aether and Argotha gets destroyed, which is our plan, the Keepers die as well. So maybe they are also in on it. But that does make me question, does that necessarily mean they're bad if they need the ether to survive? It's a difficult one to answer because Agatha 115 and the ether is where everything went wrong for humanity. When people first discovered 115, of course the zombie outbreak happened which caused chaos. People were dying everywhere and we know any human who comes into contact with the ether turns evil as we saw with Samantha and Richtofen. They took control of the zombies. So it's almost like we are trying to get rid of it because it's bad for us. It only ever ends one way, which is the destruction of the planet. And Monty needs it in order to stay alive. Let me know in the comments section below what you think. Monty is definitely evil, but it depends on how deep you look into it. He needs the very thing we are trying to destroy, which is bad for us. And so in order to make sure it isn't destroyed, he needs to keep us in a cycle at any cost so anyway guys there we go that is it that is all for today's video as always hopefully you have enjoyed if you have you know what to do drop a like rating make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one until then goodbye